Good morning and welcome to the TJC's IP Admissions Talk. My name is Ms. Erin Woodford and I'm the Dean of the Integrated Programme. Thank you all for, all for joining us this morning as we share TJC's Integrated Programme with all of you. To start us off, I would like to invite our Principal, Mr. Ern Le Liu, to say a few words. Mr. Liu, please. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, my check is okay. Thank you so much. Okay, good morning, parents and students. Thank you for joining us this Saturday morning. Uh, before I share a few words from what I've prepared, I just want to say thank you to the seven colleagues and one student who are here this morning with us. It's a busy period still for us because we are closing the year. And also, if you have heard, we are 45 years old this year and we are having our second cohort reunion where we ask the students from the batches of 1988 to 1999 to come back and enjoy the campus with us. So that's what's happening in the college this morning. And later on, we expect about 800 to 1,000 alumni here enjoying the friendships and fellowships from the last 30 years or so. We look forward to that. In the midst of all that, my colleagues have been preparing hard for this morning's admissions talk and I want to express my gratitude to the seven colleagues who are here and of course Ellie, our student who is joining us this morning as well to share her experiences. Uh, parents and students, we thank you once again for joining us this Saturday morning. We know that you've just received your PSLA results a couple of days ago. And right now you're in the midst of deciding what are the secondary school choices to put into your uh, applications. Um, I, I want to share a few words and also maybe just uh, let you know that even as I prepared for this morning's sharing, I'm thinking about your perspectives and what you would be thinking and asking yourselves as you make this um, exciting choice for the choice of the secondary schools. And I'm going to speak both as a colleague, as a teacher, right, as well as a parent. Uh, I know my experiences choosing a secondary school for my own daughter was some years ago, but nonetheless, I think those are valuable experiences. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I want to share what I've prepared. My name is Mr. Liu. I joined the Masik JC in January this year. I've been in education for 25 years. And I've had the privilege of leading two schools, Swiss Cottage and Bowen Secondary, and also being the director of MOE Preschool Education Branch. A bit about myself. When the IP once joined TJ in January, instead of using the customary welcome speech, uh, I decided to do something different. I sang a song for them, and it was called The Rainbow Connection, and I accompanied it by my own guitar. I chose the song because rainbows are about dreams and my wish to the IP ones and to the rest of the TJ students was may your dreams come true. I chose to sing because my message to the IP ones was let's have a school where we can both work hard as well as enjoy ourselves doing it. Let's have fun even as we do school, right? And secondly, let's dare to try and let's do things a little differently, right? No need to always follow the same trodden path, if I may use that phrase. I hope that gives a little bit of a flavor of how we do college in TJ, how we do IP, and what you might experience life in TJ like if you were a student here next year. So P6 students, why join TJ? Three reasons, and of course my colleagues will give you a lot more, but three for me. TJ's motto is for college for nation. In TJ, we grow by learning to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We learn to be part of a team, to take from others, to give to others. We learn about what it means to be part of our nation, about advocacy, about caring for our country, about flying our Singapore flag high as one united people, regardless of race, language, or religion, right? That's what our pledge says. And we do this by trailblazing with the heart. We learn to grow our sense of self-agency, our sense of voice, how we dare to try, about how we learn to learn from our mistakes and don't blame or point fingers. We learn about what it means to be human and to look out for others as fellow human beings. So three reasons. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time, so let me end by saying this. Parents and students, I also want to bring up an important concept when choosing secondary schools. 
if you were at the Straits Times PS Ali seminar two Saturday mornings ago. One of the points that the seminar panelists strongly highlighted to the parents was know your child and know what works for him or her so that there's as good a match as possible between the school and the child. I repeat, know your child and what works best for him or her so that there's as good a match as possible between school and child. Specifically, the question was about this. Can your child thrive in the IP school where perhaps more independence is expected of the child? The point was this. Some children thrive on the idea of O-levels at the end of four years because there is an end goal to work towards and there's all the intermediate you know, milestones and so on. And they're motivated by the pacing towards the exams. On the other hand, some students thrive in the IP scores. Uh, they may be motivated by other things. For example, the intrinsic motivation to work towards goals that you set for yourself, right? And as, as, uh, and as Ms. Woodford talks later, to listen out for this aspect, see if you can see yourself thriving in TJC. So P6s and parents, if you have a similar outlook in life, if you want to enjoy being part of something bigger than yourself, to learn the joys of dare to try, the joys of giving to others. And if you feel that you have the inner drive it takes, then sign on the dotted line and put TJ as your first choice. Okay, with that, I'll pass the time back to Ms. Wood, Ms. Woodford and we'll have some time for Q&A later. Thank you and have a enjoyable talk. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Liu. So as Mr. Liu mentioned this morning, I'm going to be sharing a lot more about our, our IP program. I will start by giving you an introduction and overview of the whole program, our enriched core curriculum, and our holistic development. And then later you will hear from my student, Ellie, who is going to share her own experiences in the TJC IP. And finally, at the end of today's talk, I will share a bit of information about admissions and we'll end the morning's talk with a Q&A segment where our principal, Mr. Liu, and my student, Ellie, will join me to answer your questions. So on that note, here is the QR code for you to submit questions for the Q&A segment. You can submit questions anytime throughout the talk, and you're going to find the QR code at the bottom of my slides throughout. So let's begin. So why choose Temasek JC? Well, Mr. Liu gave you three reasons. I'm going to give you a few more. When you join Temasek JC IP, you are going to join a strong tradition of excellence in an institute of distinction. The environment is supportive and nurturing, and we have a vibrant and active student life. I think you heard from Mr. Liu, there's so many things going on just this morning on a Saturday at the end of the year. Finally, it's important that any school you join can bring out the best in you and assure your success. No matter what starting point your child is when they come to us, their time at TJC will be one of development and growth. They will leave TJC as leaders in a vibrant learning community, active learners who are comfortable working both independently and collaboratively, open-minded and inquisitive explorers, and as passionate advocates of community causes. Here's a quick overview of TJC's history. As mentioned by Mr. Liu, we celebrated our 45th anniversary last year. And another exciting development is that in 2019, we began our JC Rejuvenation Program, which will see us refreshing our campus grounds over the next few years. So I'm going to share more about this later in the talk particularly about our imminent move to, the TP, uh, to our Tampanese holding site. Another thing I want to highlight is that we have, the top, uh, we have been the top value added JC in the GCEA level exams for the past three years. So this means that our students leave us with better results than expected, which is an achievement of which we are all very proud. Our college ethos is anchored in our holistic concept of Tomasic excellence. We know that our students are meant for great things and our programs are designed to help you achieve greatness in intellect, leadership and character. Here are some examples of students who have gone on to exemplify Tomasic excellence in their various fields. 
We are proud that they have gone on to lead significant lives and to make a real impact on the community. Here are our TJ's in Parliament. And here are our TJ's who have excelled in a variety of fields, including entrepreneurship, as well as in the arts and architecture. You can see that our students really go on to make their mark in a very wide variety of areas with the strong foundation built during their time in TJC. Our students also gain admission into the university courses of their choice at some of the top universities in Singapore and around the world. Many of them do so on a wide range of prestigious scholarships. Our IP students excelled in the 2021 GCE A-levels, receiving a median score of 86.6 university admission points out of a total of 90. So what this means is that they can qualify for any course in any university of their choice. Additionally, one out of four of our IP students achieved the astounding achievement of a perfect score at the A-levels. In project work, which is a compulsory subject for all students, eight in 10 of our IP students scored an A grade. So our students are able to achieve excellence at the A-levels due to the strong foundation that is built from their very first IP days. So here I'm going to begin sharing about how we achieve intellectual excellence through our enriched core curriculum. Building a strong foundation starts with our IP curriculum that gives every student the opportunity to discover and develop our talents. Our IP students form the top 10% of primary six students nationwide. So we firmly believe that every student who joins us is academically talented and has many strengths of their own. We therefore offer an enriched core curriculum, which is innovative and deeply contextualized in real world and authentic situations. We also believe that every student has the capacity to be a leader, and this forms the core of our character and leadership development. Together, the three areas that you see on screen form our integrated program framework. These are our core academic subjects at IP1 and IP2, which is the equivalent of Secondary 1 and Secondary 2. Now, we consider it an enriched curriculum because we offer integrated subjects. So, for example, language arts and fundamental humanities combine the study of literature and language and geography and history, while green science combines the study of the three sciences with an emphasis on the environment and sustainability. This integration of subject disciplines trains students to make connections, leading to more sophisticated conceptual understanding. Aesthetics is also a unique subject to TJC, and all of our students go on um, to do modules on dance, drama, music, and visual arts to hone their creative expression, thinking, and confidence. So what does learning look like in the TJC classroom? Well, we use a range of pedagogical approaches, such as collaborative learning and experiential learning in life, uh, in authentic real world contexts, enhanced by the use of ICT and technology for learning. We also provide our students with many, many authentic platforms to demonstrate their learning. So in lower IP, all of our students put up aesthetics showcases for the modules I mentioned just now. And you can see a picture on the screen there of my students doing a dance performance for their aesthetics showcase. I also want to highlight TEDx at TJC, which is a flagship program by our language arts department in conjunction with TEDx Singapore. Each year, our IP3 students stage their own TEDx at TJC, and you can view their inspiring talks on YouTube by scanning the QR code on the slide. To further develop student skills and dispositions in real world contexts, we have flagship programs for all of our IP students at different levels. These are specially designed programs which provide meaningful and authentic contexts that students can, in which students can apply the skills they've learned in the classroom. During IP sabbatical week, the students are inspired to learn beyond the syllabus in fun and engaging ways. Our IP1 or SEC1 students participate in exposure modules where they learn new skills, such as taping up minor injuries with sports tape under the PE module, 
compose, composing music with a graphic notation score under the aesthetics module and making ice cream to learn about scientific concepts under the science module. At our upper IP levels, students are trained in debate skills, philosophy and critical thinking, and also develop their language skills for their mother tongue languages using immersive activities such as drama. This year in particular, our students focused on interdisciplinary learning through activities such as drone flying, financial risk management, and exploring the integration of science concepts by making lava lamps. Another flagship program is our World Without Borders program. All of our IP2 students develop cultural awareness through practicing the ethnographic methods to learn about communities in Singapore, how they are formed and how they continue to evolve. So on the screen, you can see some artwork and artifacts uh, done by my students who visited the Tanjong Paga neighborhood. Our Wonder Observe Weave Attachment Program allows all of our IP5, that means our JC1 students, to pursue a one-month mentorship and attachment with a range of universities, research institutes, social enterprises, and organizations. Students engage in projects with their partner, universe, uh, partner organization. And here you can see two examples of projects that they have done uh, with the Lee Kuan Yew City Center for Innovative Cities and ASTAR. So from my sharing so far, you can see that we really provide a varied uh, range of learning opportunities, both within the classroom and beyond it. And I hopefully from this, you can start to get a sense of whether or not the program is a good fit for your child. So as Mr. Liu shared just now, um, there are many, many paths to take after PSLE and really every path has its merits and we want to find a path that best complements every child's personality and strengths. So we do find that children who thrive in the IP and in the programs that I've described just now show traits such as independence, the ability to be self-directed, uh, the ability to also be flexible and perhaps work without having um, such rigorous structures in place at times. They also are able to show traits such as time management and self-motivation to learn. And as you can see from my sharing, there's lots and lots of group work in the IP. So students who do well in this program tend to enjoy collaborative learning and working cooperatively. And because we do lots of learning that's beyond the typical textbook curriculum, you can see that students who have a learning style where they are curious, open-minded, and eager to explore ideas beyond the textbook um, tend to do very well in the IP as well. So just giving you an idea of the kind of profile of students who suit the IP very well and tend to thrive and really enjoy their time here. Let me now move on to our talent development program. So as I said at the beginning of my talk, um, we really believe that every student has talents to be nurtured and developed. And this philosophy founds, forms the foundation of our talent development programs in TJ. Our curriculum is based on the Renzulli Enrichment Triad model, and we provide programs for all students at tier one and two level. For example, the flagship programs that you just heard about. The aim of this is to help students develop their interests and passions. However, we also have some students who come to us already knowing what their talents and passions are. And these students can be stretched through higher level tier three programs. And this can have an, happen even at the IP1 level if students are ready. What we really emphasize is students growth during their years with us. So we hope that as they discover their talents, we can continue to stretch and nurture them to move on to higher tiers of study and growth. Here are some examples of the work that our students do in TA. Uh, I'll just highlight, for example, in TA mathematics, our students use our maker space in order to do 3D printing, which infuses the skill of mathematics design and programming. They're closely mentored by our teachers, and there are also many opportunities for them to learn from industry practitioners and experts in various disciplines. We're very proud of our students' achievements across a variety of areas, which includes STEM.
as well as the languages and humanities. So I'd like to also highlight the Prime Minister's Book Prize, which is awarded to students who show high proficiency in bilingualism. Here are a few more of our very special talent programs. We are proud to be the MOE Centre for the following special programs, Music Elective, Chinese Language Elective, and the Humanities Scholarship. The MEP and CLEP programs are offered in IP1 and IP3. Uh, just now, if you came a little bit earlier for the talk, right at the beginning, you have, would have heard a couple of our MEP students performing very beautifully. The Humanities Scholarship is offered only in IP5, which is the first year of junior college. Our IP students are able to achieve excellence at the A levels due to not just our academic curriculum, but also our focus on character and leadership. So as I said just now, we believe that every student is a leader at every moment um, and every day. Our differentiated leadership framework ensures that every student receives a tailored leadership development experience. And one thing that's very important to us is that we give them many, many platforms for them to practice and grow in their leadership skills. Okay, we encourage our students to really step up in the TJ community because we do believe that leadership starts at home. Our IP student counsellors are proud role models for the student community. Later, you're going to hear from one of our student counsellors, Ellie, and they play a very significant role in creating a lively and vibrant student life. We also tap on our distinguished alumni who return to inspire our students by sharing their own leadership journeys. So one example of this is our Inside Outside Leadership Speaker Series, which is offered to all of our IP students. We also give our students global exposure through organizing a number of different conferences, uh, both in Singapore as well as globally. Our co-curricular activities play an important role in students' holistic development. We offer a vibrant range of CCAs for IP students. The CCA offerings become more extensive at JC level as our cohort increases in size. And I will also refer you to our college website where you can view the whole list of CCAs that we offer, uh, particularly for our IP students. So our students excel in the performing arts and they've done very well at the Singapore Youth Festival. And again, if you came in a little bit earlier, you would have seen our IP band, uh, our IP dance and our IP choir performances just before this talk. And they also put up a very strong showing in a variety of sports. I also now want to touch on um, teaching excellence. I think a school is nothing without its teachers. Okay. And I do want to share that in TJC, we really play a strong mentoring role in our students' lives. So in the IP, this takes the form of a dedicated staff, which looks out for all IP students. So as the Dean of IP, my role is to support uh, all IP students in every aspect of their growth and daily lives. Each IP class also has two form teachers to support them, particularly in IP1, as they transition from primary school to the new secondary school IP environment. We do have a quite a small cohort of students, so this means that our teachers get to know each student very, very well over their time with us. And these bonds are essential to students' growth and well-being while they're in TJC. And as a testament to our excellent teaching faculty, uh, our teachers have gone on to win a number of awards for excellence in various areas of teaching, as well as excellence in caring for our students. So with the guidance of our teachers, we are very sure that your child will have a rich experience in TJCIP. We value add to our students in their academic performance, but also in many, many other areas. And fundamental to this is their character development, their experiences beyond the classroom, and really most importantly, the bonds and friendships that they build with teachers and peers, which we hope will last their lifetime. 
On this note, I now want to introduce my student, Ellie. Ellie is uh, our IP Students Council president, and she was actually one of the students in the uh, modern dance video that you would have seen right at the beginning of this talk. So she's going to share her experiences in TJC IP. Okay. Ellie, over to you. Thank you, Ms. Woodford. Good morning, prospective students and parents. Ellie, a current year three IP student in TJC. To start off, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this talk to find out more about our program. I'm glad to see that you have chosen to take time off your busy schedules to listen to what makes TJC so different and why you should choose our school to be your second home for the next six years. I'm sure it's a very stressful time for the P6 students with us here today. You have such a wide range of schools to choose from, but only so little time to choose your preferred secondary school. I hope that my sharing today can provide you with the confidence that the TJ Integrated Program can provide you with not only a plethora of opportunities, but a place where you can seek comfort, fun, and joy for the six years that you are here with us. This sharing may be a little different from what you will normally expect, I'll bring out, as I will be bringing you through a day in my life as a TJ -shan. I hope that by doing so, I can show you that it's through the small moments that I experience daily, TJC has become a home away from home for me and many of my friends. On a typical day, I arrive in school early in the morning, and as I walk through the school gates, I'm greeted by the fresh morning dew from the large greenery around me. From trees to flowers, birds to butterflies, I believe that the nature that we have in TJC is something that is unique to us. Having nature surround us wherever we are on campus is calming and cool in its own way. I mean, who doesn't, have it, who, who doesn't love having botanic gardens as their campus? And as I walk towards my classroom, I'm also greeted by the warm smiles of the students and staff. This makes me feel excited to come to school every day, knowing that I am cared for in this school. I can still remember arriving on my first day of school for orientation and being introduced to my seniors, such as our orientation group leaders, or OGLs for short. The OGLs were so kind and patient. They showed us around the college and got to know us personally. This had allowed me to start my TJC journey on a high note and feel welcomed into the TJC family. Some pictures shown on the right-hand side of the slide are from previous orientations that we've had and what prospective students can expect on their first few days of school. I'm sure that students who do join us in 2023 will feel the same warm and welcoming atmosphere that I did. Next, let them begin. The tutors here never fail to amaze me, as they make learning fun and engaging with our best interests in mind. But what really stands out to me about the academic experience here is that it not only allows us to become more knowledgeable, but it also teaches us to be better people. One example of this was when we learned about the civil rights movement and women's suffrage movement in, fundal humanities in year, fundamental humanities in year two. This subject is a combination of the humanities subject like history, geography, and social studies, and it's a subject that is unique to TJC. Studying about these topics really opened my eyes to not only the history about real-world issues that we still face today, but it also helped me to grow in terms of being grateful for the life that I have. This is just one of the many examples of how our IP curriculum not only aims to set us up for academic excellence, but also teaches us to grow to become mindful and sensible leaders of the future. After school ends, I have CCA, being part of the Modern Dance Club as seen before this talk, and the Students' Council, it has allowed me to make many unforgettable memories and pick up new skills along the way. My Modern Dance CCA has given me many, many platforms to perform, from school-based events like the art showcase known as Hearts at TJC, to representing TJC in the Singapore Youth Festival early last year. Sadly, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, my batch of dancers have missed out on many performance opportunities. But it's not all that bad, thanks to the innovation and creativity of my seniors. They came up with a way for us to still have somewhat similar performance opportunities by filming music videos with the choreography that we've learned, as you see before the talk, and posting them on our college and CCA social media platform. I mean, how cool is that? My seniors were truly able to adapt and persevere through the challenges that they faced which is something that I really admired. More importantly, I thought that this was a great example of how TJC trains us to be resilient and that no matter the situation, there is always a way to bounce back and come back stronger than before. In year two, I was given the opportunity to be part of the Students' Council, or SC for short. 
being part of SC has boosted my development as a leader in many aspects. It has given me the chance to plan large-scale events, such as the IPL orientation as seen in my earlier slide, and to initiate effective changes that will help to improve my fellow physicians' experiences in the college, as Ms. Woodford has mentioned. Being a part of the SC has also helped me to realize that in TJC, we benefit from the countless leadership opportunities available to all students regardless. Some opportunities include being a thematic ambassador for large-scale events like our recent cohort reunions, or even being a facilitator in a nationwide leadership event known as the Thomasic Leadership Showdown. The opportunities to hone your leadership skills are truly endless. Lastly, and most importantly, I think that one point that encapsulates all the things that I've mentioned is the people in TJC. From my cohort mates, seniors, juniors, staff, and school leaders, TJ has always been a place where I feel safe and warm. Just like how family members are always there with you, no matter the circumstance, the friends that I have made in TJC have, with, have been there with me through my highs and lows. From celebrating the many small wins that we make to generously lending a listening ear whenever needed. They are humble, caring, trustworthy, sincere, loyal, and most importantly, people that I can confide in. The people that I have interacted with in TJC have made a positive impact on my life in their own ways. And this is why I believe you should join us. We welcome everyone into our warm and caring TJC family, regardless of your background and aspiration. So I hope that through my sharing, you are one step closer to confidently choosing TJC as your future school. Thank you for your attention. I hope to see you here next year. Okay, thank you very much, Ellie, for your sharing. Um, I just want to say that what Ellie said is really what we want to see from our IP students and the qualities that we hope we develop in them over their time with us. So what she shared about her resilience, uh, the friendships that she has, this is what we hope for from our students. And I think she's given you a very good idea of what student life like is like in TJC IP. So thank you very much, Ellie. Okay, I'm going to move on to very quickly talking about admissions. Okay, we know that you are all now considering, as Ellie said, you've got many, many choices to make and um, are wondering what's ahead of you. Um, you will apply via the PSLE posting exercise from MOE, um, but if you want to come to TJC, but one thing we do want you to note is this, uh, we are not a dual track school. So what that means is that we only offer the IP track uh, we do not offer the O-level track. So we are different from some other schools in that respect. So something important for you to note. Okay, another important and happy piece of news that I would like to share is that we do have the TJC Academic Excellence Award. Um, so this is offered to outstanding students who are Singaporeans or permanent residents and have achieved a PSLE score of achievement level six and better. That means AL four, five, and six. It's a $1,000 award, and you will receive it automatically upon your admission to TJC. All right, I mentioned earlier that we are part of the, of the Junior College Rejuvenation Program. So we are very, very excited about this. Uh, you can see in the picture our current college campus at Badok South. We have one more year here, and we are going to be moving out of this campus at the end of next year, so at the end of 2023. Uh, we will be at a holding site in Tampines, and I'll show you where, uh, for a few years. And in 2028, we are really looking forward to moving back to our current site in Badok South. But of course, we are going to have a brand new uh, cutting-edge campus, okay? Very different from the one that we have now. Right, so our holding site will be at the former Tampines Junior College, not very far away from where we are now. Okay, and we'll be there um, for about four years between 2024 and 2027, okay? So we are currently working very closely with MOE to ensure that the former TPJC site is very well prepared for us uh, and ready for us when we move over at the end of next year. It's a very easily accessible site, okay? This is the Tampani site. Uh, there's an MRT station right out beside the school gates, okay, and many buses. So for more information on this, uh, do check our school website and you can see more info there. 
All right, so I think that ends the sharing part of this morning's talk. Uh, we want to now move on to the Q&A segment. And I want to say thank you for all the many questions that have been coming in via our Google link. Uh, I'm just going to show the link briefly one more time while we prepare uh, to take your questions. Okay, so joining us for today's talk, uh, today's Q&A segment will be Ellie as well as Mr. Liu. Okay, so just give me one minute. I'm going to stop share. All right. Okay, so I think we can begin the Q&A segment. Uh, maybe I'll start us off. There are many, many questions coming in. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to address the big question that everyone is asking right now, which is what is our cutoff point for TJC? Okay. Um, we do not know what the cutoff point is yet for this year's PSLE, as I'm sure you know. But what I can give you is our cutoff point for last year, that means the 2022 intake, and that was AL8. Okay, so our cutoff point for the last intake was AL8. Okay, we also have questions with regards to third language, all right? Um, will third language be counted during streaming from IP2 to IP3? That means from SEC2 to SEC3. So yes, a student's third language grade is counted in their overall computation of their score. So in TJC, we do it via grade point average or GPA. So the third language grade will affect their overall score and their overall performance. Uh, however, it will not affect the particular subject combination that they want to choose. So they can still choose our triple science or double science combination and have their third language uh, in addition to that. Okay, so uh, I hope that clarifies. Uh, quite a few questions have come in about our attachment programs, right? So um, do all of the students get to go on attachment programs? I believe you are referring to our WOW attachment in IP5. Uh, and the answer is yes. All of our IP5 students go on this one-month attachment. Um, they are given the opportunity to choose from a range of partners. And our aim is really to allow students to choose something that interests them so that they can see what, um, you know, get real world and real life experiences in their area of interest beyond TJC. And this is something that we offer for every single one of our students when they hit IP5 or JC1. Okay, there are some questions about teachers. Uh, I'm wondering, Mr. Liu, if you would like to take this question on our teachers, all right? Um, are the IP teachers open to consultation with children? And will they guide our new IP1 students when they transit from primary school? Thanks, Ms. Wilford. That's an important question which we all are interested in. I would like to say that whether in TJ or in any other school, all the secondary schools are aware that the transition from PSLE year to the secondary one year is something that needs to take time to happen it is um there are many opportunities for the students but at the same time there are also things that the students have to get used to so for example let's say if you were to talk about tj in particular in at the psle there are four examinable subjects at um, the ip1 there are a bunch of others right there's the humanities there's the aesthetics and some other um, subjects as well in addition to that, at the PSLE year, uh, perhaps there was uh, some of the CCA activities uh, for some of the weeks, but in the secondary schools, there are CCA activities every week and perhaps sometimes even twice a week. At the primary school level, there are the students, the P6s are the oldest in the school. In the secondary one level, you are probably the newest in the whole school. So we're very aware of these different dimensions where transitions need to happen. And teachers take care to check in with the students. Teachers take care to guide the students. Teachers take care to see if the, there are students who need a bit more help here or a bit more help there. We are very conscious that it takes time to develop a sense of confidence in the new school. And so besides making sure that our teachers are able to connect to the students, 
we make sure that the students are able to connect to the students as well. I mean, really, we all know, right? Um, friends at the teenager level, they are the first people that people that teenagers go to uh, if they need help. And so we make sure that at the class level, there's class bonding time. We make sure that the civic students are able to have enough time to make sure that the students will have time to bond together as a class, learn to work together, and uh, really to enjoy their teacher experience. Maybe I'll just stop there because I tend to go on, but to cut the long story short, I want to say that yes, the tutors make care, take care to transit the students well into secondary one. For uh, all the primary six students out there, uh, maybe I just give you a rule of thumb also. It might take a two or three months, maybe the first term, maybe even some of term two for you to become confident in your secondary school, whether you come to TJ or to any other school. So maybe i stop there. Thank you, Mr. Liu. I'm going to take a couple of questions about languages. If a child studies third language, will she, he or she take uh, the O-level examinations at IP4 or SEC4? Uh, the answer is yes, they will take the O-level examinations and they will do so at the respective language centres that they are a part of. With regards to our mother tongue languages offered within TJC, uh, I do have a question asking what is the average class size for Malay language or higher Malay language uh, in IP. So we typically have a small class size, usually around about 10 or fewer students. Um, and this really ensures that our students get close attention. Okay. Uh, will Tamil and ha higher Tamil and uh, language lessons be provided? Yes, they will. They are uh, higher Tamil and Tamil language um, are one of our mother tongue language subjects. And the lessons are conducted in TJC. Okay, maybe two more questions about our elective programs uh, before I move on to something slightly different. With regards to our music elective program, I have a question asking, uh, what does the music elective program for IP1 entail? So in this subject, students are exposed to a really diverse range of musical genres and cultures, and they'll be engaged in musical activities that integrate the three core skills of holistic musicianship. Uh, and these core skills are performing, composing, and listening. Okay, so we have a very strong MEP department in TJ, and we're very proud of our students' performances. I think our last question is about, uh, in this area at least, not our last question for today, um, it's about art, okay, and art as a subject. So in lower IP, and that means in secondary one and secondary two, all of our students do the aesthetics modules, which I mentioned just now. Um, and that's their exposure to visual art as well as different forms of aesthetics. Uh, we do not offer art as a subject at upper secondary level or at JC level at the moment. Okay. Uh, I think many people are wondering about typical school hours for the IP and I do have a question here for Ellie. So let me just very quickly talk about typical school hours and then I'll pass the time over to Ellie, okay? So typical school hours for our lower, I, uh, well, everybody starts school at 8 a.m., okay? Uh, on Thursdays next year, we will start at 8.30, okay? Um, and for our IP1 students, they will finish around about 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., um, slightly different on different days. Uh, that's our standard school curriculum. Of course, if you take additional enrichment activities, these will happen in the afternoon. So for example, our Tomasic Academy programs will happen later in the afternoon. Uh, similarly with our music elective programs, et cetera. Uh, and our CCAs happen typically between about 2.30 or 3 o'clock and maybe 6 p.m. Okay, so uh, everyone has a slightly different start timing, but that's just to give you a rough gauge of what your child's day will be like in terms of time. And related to that is the question for Ellie, which is how do you manage your time when you're doing all of these different activities? So I think Ellie, you want to share with us? Because you're doing many things, right? You're doing IPSC, <laughs> you're doing dance. Yeah, yeah you're upper IPSC. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really bound to get stressful, especially as you move up the levels from um, lower IP to upper IP. But mm -hmm. I think one way that really helped me was that I made sure that I take care of myself first before I started going on with the activities. So when I have little pockets of time, 
I try and breathe as much as I can and just um, relax my mind before I move on to other activities. And I feel like this really helped me manage my time and get through the activities faster and more easily. And another way that, that was really good for me was that the teachers always actively checked up on us for if like, uh, our workload and how we are managing with all our extracurriculars and during those times they will also offer help and like um, they would say do you need help with this certain topic if they see that we are weak in it or they will sometimes reduce the workload if they know that the entire class is struggling with extracurriculars as well especially during periods such as um, the national school games or the Singapore Youth Festival period so this is um, mostly how I manage my time with all the activities yeah Ms. Ford, but maybe I just jump in at this point. Uh, I also saw some questions uh, regarding to the academic rigor and what happens if the students face some challenges in academic studies. Uh, I want to just say that the one of the key premises uh, of uh, students who will find IP to be enjoyable and who have a greater chance of success uh, is that the IP students are independent, they're able to be self-driven, they are able to manage group work and they in fact thrive in group work and they're able, as Ellie says, or to manage their time and to take care of themselves. I, I mentioned this because um, I, I, I wonder if some of the maybe misconceptions about IP is that you, you really need to study very hard and you really need to um, uh, put in the hours and so on. I guess that's one way to put it. But actually, if you are able to enjoy all these things and see the opportunities to do group work as opportunities to learn, to work with people, to understand other people's perspectives, then it becomes a joy and not a chore. It becomes something that you enjoy and it's not work. Right. I also want to address the elephant in the room about tuition. Um, I, I don't know what parents' uh, perspectives about tuition are, but I'd like to say that in TJ, we are able to give the students what they need in class. And of course, there are some students who will need extra support from the, from the tutors. And that will happen outside of class time. And that's really quite sufficient for the students in TJ. And if you're wondering if you need to take tuition, then maybe um, just, have, how do I say, it? adopt the perspective that just come in with the idea, with the mindset that you will be able to thrive using the lessons and the consultations that the teachers will give you. Uh, I, I caution about tuition because it does take extra time. As Ellie said, you know, sometimes she goes off at five, six o'clock. Uh, and if parents are thinking about giving extra tuition just so that the, the child can succeed and, you know, do well academically, then that takes up extra time in the evenings on Saturdays and Sundays. And it just maybe it's difficult to balance that. So I give a caution on the idea of tuition. And uh, again, I want to stress that uh, students who find TJIP uh, an enjoyable experience, they are able to thrive here, tend to be the ones who are a bit more independent, who enjoy group work, who can manage your time, and basically are quite self-driven and intrinsically motivated. So maybe I'll stop there and I'll pass the time back to Ms. Woodford. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Um, yeah, I agree with everything Mr. Liu said. I think that those are some very wise thoughts to consider. Um, I also want to add on that so while students we need to be independent by nature and all that, um, I think time management is also a skill that we help students to develop and learn. And one of the ways in which we do this is by asking students like Ellie um, to really share their experiences with our younger students. So this happens at things like cohort assemblies. Uh, we do something called a human library for our IP1 students, where the seniors share with them what life is like, how to, ex how to manage it, um, what they do when they face challenges, etc. So really the learning also comes from student to student. Uh, and it's something that students really, I think, they, they cherish the experiences which their seniors share with them rather than always just hearing from their teachers. So that's an important point. Um, with regards to, I think similarly, right, um, enrichment, uh, there are some parents who are asking us about Tomasic Academy. Um, and I think you're quite concerned about what does it take to get into Tomasic Academy? How many students are accepted, etc. So let me just address this. Uh, students will be offered entry into Tomasic Academy um, based on their overall academic results. Um, 
but really primarily the passion and interest that they show for that particular Temasek Academy subject. So do they have real passion and curiosity for maths or for English or whatever it is? Yeah. Um, this depends on results partially, but also their teachers' observations. So what are they like in class, etc. cetera? Uh, I also want to assure parents that Tamasic Academy is not the only way in which we develop students' talents and interests. Um, that is one enrichment program, but as I think you can see from my sharing, there are many, many points of enrichment built into the entire uh, IP experience. So really, whether or not your child gets into TA, um, there are many, many points for developing their talents, their interests, um, and their passions. A uh, couple more questions, right? Before I hand the time back to Mr. Liu, because I think he wants to talk about some of the pressing issues. Yeah. Um, just a couple more questions with regards to uh, Hindi language. Does TJC offer Hindi in mother tongue languages during school hours? Uh, no, we only offer Tamil language. So students who want to offer Hindi language uh, should contact the Hindi Society and DAV themselves. Uh, and attend lessons at the respective language centers uh, in a structured learning environment. Okay. Right, how many classes are there for IP? Uh, in our IP1 or secondary one level, we have five classes um, in, in lower IP. Okay, so secondary one, five classes, secondary two, five classes. So you can see it's a really very small and cozy cohort. Uh, and that's why our teachers get to know the students very well. Uh, I'm going to pass the time back to Mr. Liu. Um, who I think wants to talk about the big move that we have coming up, Mr. Liu? That's right. Okay, thanks, Ms. Wood. But uh, maybe I, before I talk about the big move, I just uh, build off on what Ms. Wood said about the class size. So, so we've got 170 students at the IP1 level, uh, and that's spread across five classes. So that's about, about 35, I think, for each class. Um, I, I bring up that point because some of the parents also asked about the range of CCs available. Um, and we have sized the variety of CCAs according to the size. Sorry. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Sorry. I realized that uh, I wasn't able to be heard very well. Okay. One more time. So I want to talk about 107, the, the size of the IP1 cohort. So we've got 170 students uh, spread across five classes. And uh, I bring this up because some of the parents have been asking about the range of CCAs. Um, we, we design the range of CCAs according to the number of students that we have so that the number in each CCA is not too big and neither is it too small. If it's too small, then basically um, the effects of socialization in the CCAs are not so strong. And uh, we also don't have too few. Uh, in other words, we want to provide the students with a fair range of CCA choices. So we have what we have, and you can see it on the website that we, uh, of, of the range of CCs that we have. Uh, some of the parents asked, do we have uniform groups? No, we don't. Uh, we have sports and games, clubs and societies, and of course, uh, performing arts at CCAs. Okay, so that's about uh, class size. There's some other thread of questions about um, academic work. Uh, some of the parents have been asking, you know, so if let's say the students realize that the IP route is not for you, then what happens? Um, will the students be forced out of uh, teaching? I, I guess one way to think about it is that um, maybe if your academic results here are not so good, then you, uh, will you be asked to find some other route? Uh, I think the simple answer is that we are committed to the IP students for six years. And as far as possible, we want to make sure that the IP students succeed because it's in your interest and frankly, it's in our interest as well. Right? And so we do provide the academic support and so forth. But there are students who, you know, through the course of even two or three or four years, realize that, hey, you know, the amount of independence, the amount of self-motivation that we require in TJ is really high and maybe you prefer something else. And maybe by the time you reach 15 or 16, you realize that, hey, you want to do something else. We do have students who choose a different path, maybe to the polytechnics, and that's uh, a, a different route that you take. Not to say that these students are people who fail. Let me make it clear. I don't think that we have this mindset that students who are not able to continue or don't want to continue in JC1 here are people who have not succeeded. That's simply 
path. As we know, in Singapore, we want to celebrate different pathways to success. And that's something that we believe in teaching as well. So if you decide to take a different route, that's fine. It's just a different route. It's not a, an indication of uh, the lack of success. Um, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to say. Yeah, cut off point eight. So the parents ask, oh, what are the chances of getting into TJ if, the, if your child has got an AL score of eight points? I'd say choose TJ if you feel that the culture and that what the espouse is for you, it is a good match to what you are. Choose TJ, put TJ as your first choice. Uh, you, you know how the posting system is done. You can Google and uh, if you can, if you want to check out the uh, website on the, PS, the, the PSLE website on the moe.gov.sg uh, website, there are an indication there of the tiebreakers that you use in the SEC1 posting system. The tiebreaker one is citizenship. Second one is uh, choice order of schools, and the third one is computerized balloting. All these are publicly available pieces of information, and I'll leave you to read them on your own. But what I do want to offer to you is this thought. Um, at the PSLE uh, seminar two weeks ago, uh, one of the suggestions put forward was this: that you know sometimes we want to make sure that the child, uh, we want to make sure that we get our first choice. And, uh, you know, when we don't get the first choice, then there's this angst, there's this, oh, yeah, so wasted, and so people have a sense of disappointment and so on. So perhaps a different mindset I want to offer to you uh, is this, that perhaps we can think about uh, making sure that we want to be successful, how to say, comfortable with all the top three choices that we put down. And as long as we are able to get one the top three, uh, let's be content about that. I don't know how you all feel about this as Singaporean parents. We all want the best and so forth. But maybe a different way of thinking about posting and selection of set one uh, school is this. Instead of just being focused on the first choice, maybe let's think about the first three choices. And as long as we're comfortable, as long as we know that our child will fit in reasonably well, Right? And of course, there are questions and there are concerns. But hey, let's put them aside because we can only do what we can do, right? We, can only, we, we can't foretell the future. So let's go into it with our eyes open. And if we are able to get the top three, um, let's be content about that. I say that respectfully. And not, 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 I'm not trying to diss anybody's mindset. But I think that's something that I would do if, um, if in that position again. Okay, one last thing for me, and that's about the big move. Uh, we're going to move at the end of next year to the former Tampines JC site at Tampines, as Ms. Woodford shared in her slides. When will the move take? Will it take place during term time, during the hustle and bustle, during the busyness of teaching and learning and exams and so forth? No. <laughs> we, we, uh, to be honest, we can't cope with that either. So what happens is that uh, at the end of next year, in uh, October or so, after we finish, no, October, November or so, after we finish our usual school year and our CC activities and so forth, we'll start moving in November next year. Uh, probably around mid-November, the bulk of the movements will start. We'll move the CCA stores and the you know, science lab equipment and so forth and so on and so forth. Um, one of the parents was asking, will the teachers be very involved and will it take a toll on their teaching and learning? Uh, I assure you, no, and I assure you with uh, great confidence because we're not going to do it during the term time. Um, I know that some of you might have driven by the Tampines JC site at this point, and I know that uh, some of you will be asking, hey, will it be ready or not? You know, what will the facilities be like? I assure you that Tampines JC was designed for a JC, and therefore all the facilities, whether it's CCA rooms or music rooms or art rooms, or lecture theatres, or the library, and so on and so forth. I mean, basically, PPJC has those facilities. We are in the process of making sure that we are renewing them, changing what needs to be changed, maybe the light bulb has blown, things like that. Yeah, we're in the process of doing that. We started that in June this year, and we'll take all the way to around term three or so next year. So it's a long process. We've got some time. And we're making sure that um, when the students go there, it's not a, ha, huh, you know, we are going to be stuck here for four years. But it is a place where they go there and they'll be wowed by the facilities.
that is what we're trying to do. I don't know whether we'll be successful, but we, it is certainly our goal there. I know some of you will also be thinking, yeah, so inconvenient, you know, now we are here, then later on we'll have to um, get used to the travel patterns for a different site. And then in our child's JC2 year, because we'll be moving back to the Bedok site in JC2, uh, in our child's JC2 year, we'll have to get used to yet another different set of patterns and yet another different set of the facilities and so on. Uh, maybe that's one way to think about it. And maybe another way is, frankly, uh, in the history of Singapore, you will never get another chance uh, to do this. Uh, you will never get a chance to move a school and to experience how it is like in three different school campuses. I know that one way to think about is maybe oh, so many inconveniences, but another way is that, hey, this is also a chance to learn about being adaptable, being nimble, being resilient, and hey, making the best of the circumstances. And we promise you that the circumstances that we have are not just going to be average or adequate, but they will surpass what we are hoping for, we will make sure that the facilities at TPJC, the former TPJC site, are things that will be very comfortable and very conducive. So, like the parent support group was asking the other day, um, will the cafe move? Yes, we'll make sure that the cafe moves. We teachers also need the caffeine to uh, be able to function and to be able to serve the students well. So, yes, I want to assure you that we're taking great care to make sure that the move happens as smoothly and as successful successfully uh, as possible and not just about the move and the facilities right but we'll make sure that the student affects that their sense of togetherness their sense of belonging are built using these moving experiences okay so uh, as, as i said i tend to go on so maybe i'll just stop here and see whether miss Woodford has any other uh, things that she wants to address and to close thanks miss Woodford. thanks mr Liu. no i have nothing to add i think you've addressed everything very thoroughly um, I do want to just let parents know that although we do need to close this session for today, uh, you are more than welcome to email us if you have more questions. Uh, just give me a moment for me to put the, let me see if I can get the email up. Whoops. Okay. I hope you can see our email address. Okay. Um, and of course, I would like to encourage you to visit our college website and you're going to find um, our IPE open house website up there as well. And you can get, a, you know, spend your time exploring all the different programs. Uh, you can see more sharing, um, you know, no more videos with student sharings and things like that. Um, and really get a sense of what we are like as a college. Um, this session has also been recorded. So you can watch it again on our microsite uh, if you wish to. Just visit our college website and you will be able to see the links and, and see where you can view the session. Okay, um, so I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Let's bring this session to a close. I know it's Saturday, everyone must have plans. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. And to all of our P6 students uh, who are watching with your parents today, a big congratulations for completing your PSLE and receiving your results. Very well done on your achievement. And I hope you take the time with your parents over the next few days to really think through your options. And we wish you all the best uh, as you make the choice for the next step in your education journey. Wherever you go, whatever you do, it's going to be an exciting one. Okay, so with that, thank you very much, everyone. We will end our talk for today, but you are welcome to continue emailing us with your questions. Have a pleasant Saturday.